There are so many unanswered questions in intro psych textbooks about how neurons work. Uh, I want to emphasize just a few main points about how neurons work so that you can help your students better understand how neurons work. Uh, because you think about the importance of what neurons do, which is they're the basis for our behavior, right? We, we don't behave without neurons. So they're a, cru they're a crucial part of our behavior and what we do. So, uh, first of all, how many of you are just, you don't feel very confident in your ability to teach how neurons work? Okay. How many of you are just like, I just don't quite know how it all works myself and, you know, you know it at the level of the intro psych book and you can convey that uh, and students seem okay with it, but maybe I can give you a few more uh, details that will help you, something's going to click, okay, in this part of the lecture, something's going to click for you, there's like, oh, I didn't know that, okay? And that makes sense, and it finally fills in a missing piece that maybe you didn't have before. So there's our, our favorite neuron, okay? Just the classic motor neuron, okay? Neurons come in a wide variety of sizes and shapes, but uh, that one looks like the classic motor neuron with all the different parts. And when we talk about action potentials, um, we are talking just about from here to the end. We're not talking about the dendrites and the cell body. That's a different type of potential that occurs. But ultimately, when we have an action potential, which is this neural signal that's sent up to 100 meters per second in some neurons, we're talking about the axon. Okay? That's only the only place where the action potentials occur. So maybe you didn't even know that. Okay? And note that some of these neurons have these purple hot dog buns wrapped around them. Okay? <laughs> which is the myelin sheath, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. If you zoom in on this membrane of the cell, okay, you find this phospholipid bilayer. It's a fluid, flexible membrane, but there are proteins embedded within this membrane. They are, some of them act as channels or pores that allow only certain ions to pass through and only at certain times. Okay? So it is, these, it is these proteins that are crucial for the functioning of neurons. Because normally the membrane is impermeable to ions. Okay? They're not allowed to cross. We can measure the electrical activity of neurons by placing a very tiny electrode just inside the membrane and we can amplify those uh, electrical signals on a computer and, and, and observe electrical changes over time in neurons. And here's an actual microelectrode uh, approaching the cell body of a neuron. Okay? You can pierce the membrane and we find that at rest the inside of a neuron is negative relative to outside by a little bit, okay? by about 70 millivolts, which, you know, you get Enough of those together, you, could, you can measure. Okay? So I like to start with why okay, neurons have a negative charge inside the membrane at rest. Okay? And does anybody want to offer an explanation for you know, why do neurons have this charge? What good does it do neurons to be uh, charged even at rest when it's not sending a signal? What's the function, the purpose? Why is it negative? Well, the result, okay, of having this resting potential is just like, uh, you know, go back to your own high school experience. Uh, you talked about, like, potential energy and kinetic energy, okay? Potential energy means that work can be done. Well, essentially, by having a charged, charge, literally a charged neuron, it can do work, okay? It can do work. And it doesn't have to charge up the battery before it fires an impulse, fortunately. Because, you know, let's say that baseball is coming right at your head, you have to act quickly, okay? You don't, your brain, you don't want your brain to have to charge those neurons. Okay, charge them up, okay? Now make your head move out of the way. No, it's too late, right? So neurons are charged and ready to fire, okay? They have potential energy. And the reason for that is a number of factors, okay? So you know the sodium-potassium pump, right? It's in the membrane of neurons, 
it's uh, always working, it's always cycling in and out these, these charged ions. Okay, and ions are nothing more than uh, just a charged molecule. In fact, uh, two hydrogen atoms meet. One of them says to the other, I think I've lost my electron. The other hydrogen atom says, are you sure? The first one says, yes, I'm positive. <laughs> okay. All right. That's good. You got that. Okay. So this pump, okay, this is a section of the axon. The tube, okay, we've just taken a little cross section of it. And we've got a little pump that's working here. And that pump will pump out sodium ions, three of them, for every two potassium ions that come in. And the most important result of this pump is that it creates differences in concentrations of these ions. So where do you start to accumulate more sodium? Outside of the cell, right? And where do you start to accumulate more of the potassium? Inside the cell. Now normally at rest, this cell membrane uh, does not allow these ions to leak across. And this, re this pump results in a pretty large concentration difference between the inside and outside of a neuron. Uh, there's about 10 times as much sodium outside than there is inside. Okay, there's a lot more sodium out there. Okay? And there's about 20 times more potassium inside than there is outside. Okay? So you've got a lot of sodium outside and a lot of potassium inside. And at rest, for the most part, okay, these ions do not cross the membrane except for some potassium, which I'll mention shortly. Okay. So here's a, a figure that shows these proteins in the membrane which act as pores or channels to allow these ions to pass through, but only at certain times. Okay. So for the most part, sodiums, there's a lot of it outside. And why does it want to get inside? Okay, there's actually two reasons. One is that if it's negative inside the cell, a positive charge will be attracted to it. Okay, that's, only, that's one reason, yes. What's the other reason that it wants to get in? It, it will in just a minute. There's a, okay, it's the law of diffusion, okay, which is if there is an area of high concentration and an area of low concentration, it will try and spread out and equalize, right? It's just like you spray a drop of perfume or something, eventually it will diffuse throughout the whole room, okay, fill the available space in equal concentration. I like to uh, actually take a drop of food coloring and put it in a cup of water and not even stir it, and before long it will be completely uh, the same color throughout the solution because of diffusion. Atoms bounce around and they like to spread out from each other. Okay? So there's two reasons why sodium wants to get in. Because it's negative inside and because there's a lot more outside than inside and it'll try to just diffuse and equalize. This membrane of the axon uh, possesses what is known as selective permeability, which means that it only allows certain ions to pass at certain times. Another reason why it's... just forget this one, okay? I, I hate to see it even in my biological psychology book, okay, that says, well, you've got these large negative proteins inside the cell, and that makes it negative. That's not the main reason why it's negative inside the cell. Okay. The main reason why it's negative inside the cell at rest is because the membrane is leaky to potassium. And potassium, being positively charged, as it leaks out of the cell, you lose some positive charge. Enough that it becomes negative inside the cell. That's really the main reason why it's negative. Because at rest, neurons are leaky to potassium, and when that positive charge leaks out, relatively speaking, it's more negative just inside the membrane than it is outside. Okay. That's the main reason why it's negative at rest. Okay. Yes? I have a question. So if potassium is leaky, 
it's positive, but there's more sodium outside, why does potassium want to leak out if we're just talking about potassium? Because at rest, neurons do not let sodium cross the membrane. Sodium's not moving. Yeah, if you open up those sodium channels, guess what happens? Ooh, you get an action potential. Okay, we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay. But because at rest, only potassium is leaking out. It carries the positive charge with it, and it makes it more negative. Now, it only leaks out enough until it gets so negative that those potassium charges like, ooh, I still like that negativity. I, uh, I don't, do I want to leave? Okay, there's a lot more of us in here. We want to spread out, but oh, but it's negative inside, you know, and the more that leave, the more negative it gets, right? There's a balance there. And if you just, if you just take a membrane that only allows potassium to cross and not sodium, you can measure a potential difference of about negative 75 millivolts, okay, just because that potassium leaks out until it says, eh, it finds the balance of what pulls it back in. That's what, that's what, at rest, that's what it sits. Great question. Other questions? Yes? Does the toilet um, analogy work? For the all or none principle? Yeah. Yes, it does. Because, I mean, I've been using it, but I just want to make yes. sure that, like, as a biological psychologist. Yep, okay. that works. It's good. Uh, Okay, just very quickly. Um, a neuron will either fire an action potential or not. Okay, there's no in-between. Okay. Once you reach threshold, boom, it sends that all the way down the end of the axon every time. Okay. It's kind of like flushing the handle of a toilet or the handle of a toilet. If you don't reach that critical amount of pressure, the toilet doesn't flush. But once you reach it, boom, it flushes every time. And the other great thing is that it, it takes time to fill, right? Okay. So it's like neurons. You've got to wait, recharge just a little bit. Okay, now you can have another one. Okay. The other thing I want to emphasize is that when ions are moving across the membrane, it takes a tiny, tiny amount. And the overall concentration, okay, after you've opened up these channels and let some in and out, the overall concentration has probably changed by less than one ten thousandth of a percent. Okay. When you let neurons open their channels and ions come in and out, it takes very few of them to create these electrical currents. Okay. In other words, you still have tons of sodium out there and you still have tons of potassium inside the cell. Okay. And only over a very long period of time will that run down if you don't ever recharge it. Okay. All right, so we, I'm going to skip over that. Yes. Um, so what makes it negative inside besides the leaching? Is it the negative chloride ions? Chloride ions are both inside and outside. There's actually more chloride ions outside the cell than there are inside. Uh, but chloride plays very little role in the electrical potential of the membrane. So what makes it negative then if you've got all these positive ions? Because it's the Relative, remember, okay, it's relative inside to outside. If I take some positive charge out, okay. it becomes more negative, relatively speaking, to relative the outside. Relative. Relatively speaking, okay. yes. In fact, if you look at the overall electrical, um, you know, the number of positive and negative charges in the whole system, they're equal. It's electrically neutral. In the whole system, it's electrically neutral. It just so happens that you get enough of these positive charges just at the plate, just along the membrane, leaking out, that you can detect a difference. Okay. But in the whole system, you, you, you've got plenty of negative charge laying around. Okay. Just as much as, you know, you put table salt in, you have a sodium, and you've got a chloride ion, just as many in there. Okay. Great question. Other questions? Okay, I'm starting to get that glazed look. Oh no, you've already <laughs> lost me. All right, so this just shows, and once again, now, this is at a single point of the axon. This is not the distance of the axon. This is at a single point over time, the electrical changes that take place as the electrical impulse passes this single point, okay? Meaning that you have to have these changes take place at every part of the membrane all the way down the neuron. But we're looking at just one spot, this is what this represents. 
So over time, we have a neuron at rest, which is about minus 70 millivolts. We do something, and this is the big question that I always get. What starts the process? Okay, and it's kind of like the chicken and the egg. Well, what do you mean? You know, it's like you have to start somewhere in this cycle, right? Because upstream, you've got input from other neurons, or you have sensory organs that are causing changes that ultimately cause this neuron to become more positive to a point that these changes will take place. Okay, the action potential will be triggered. So that's always a question that comes up. But uh, what accounts for, okay, there's a threshold of excitation. What accounts for the spike? What happens at the level of the membrane to make it more, become more positive inside the cell? Sodium comes in first. Okay? So there's our resting potential. If you let sodium in, you're letting positive charge in, right? It's going to become more positive inside the neuron. Simple enough. You let positive charge in. Those ion channels in the membrane open. Okay, the ones for sodium, and they let sodium in. They don't stay open very long. Okay, they're quick to open, but they're also quick to close. The potassium channels will also open, but they're a little slower. Slower to open and slower to close. So this is why on the upshoot of the action potential, the depolarization phase, sodium is rushing in, but then the sodium channels are closing, and by now, okay, these delayed potassium channels are opening. Potassium, I mean, excuse me, sodium wants to go out, or ugh, sodium wants to go in because there's a lot more outside than inside. Potassium wants to get out even more than it does at rest. So those channels open up, and when you let positive charge out, this is kind of like your question, how does it get negative? Well, you let positive charge out, it becomes relatively more negative just inside the cell. It even overshoots that a little bit because those, sodium, those potassium channels stay open longer, and they let a lot of it out. Okay? But, and during that period of time where it's below resting threshold, it's called hyperpolarized, and it will be harder to reach threshold during this phase. Okay, this is a refractory period if, if you talk about that. But, uh, that's the refractory period. Uh, actually, this section right here, you cannot have another action potential. That's the absolute refractory period. There's no way you can open up those sodium channels again because once they're shut, they stay shut tight just for a little bit. How long does this take place? How, how long does it take for the sodium to rush in, the potassium to rush out, and by the way, these are charged particles, right? Mm -hmm. And when you move charged particles, what do you get? You get electrical currents. Yeah, that's what we're measuring. We're measuring the electricity, but electricity is nothing more than the movement of charged, charged molecules. So you let positive charge move in, it becomes positive. You let other positive charge out, it becomes more negative again. And once again, the total difference in the concentration of these two ions has barely changed at all. Okay? Which means, can you have another action potential after this one? Sure. Yeah. There's still plenty of ions that want to move. Okay? You can have thousands of these action potentials before ultimately you're going you're to equalize the concentration. And if that happens, then they're not going to move and it's, it's not going to work. So what is constantly working in the background to keep these ions different concentration? What's, what's working to keep those concentrations different? The sodium potassium pump is staying. The sodium potassium pump is always working in the background to keep these ions separated so that they'll move when you open up the channels in the membrane. The sodium-potassium pump does not have anything to do with this. Okay? The pump does not recharge you know, or reset. No. It's always working in the background. Okay? But this occurs in about a millisecond. Okay? <laughs> There's no way the sodium-potassium pump is going to keep up with that. Okay? It's constantly working in the background. Uh, skip over that one. So, I teach my students a song. 
I'm a little neuron. Okay, it remembers the, the main points of the action potential. Okay, and I know I gave you a lot more than what you probably even need, students even need to know in intro psych. But this helps them remember the, the main points of an action potential. Okay, it's to the tune of I'm a little teapot. Okay? I'm a little neuron, short and stout. Here is my dendrite, here is my spout. Now, I couldn't get axon to fit in there, so the spout is the axon. Okay? When I reach my threshold, hear me shout, let the sodium in, potassium out. Okay, so all together now with me. Okay? Uh, you didn't know you'd be singing today. You ready? I'm a little neuron, short and stout. Here is my dendrite, here is my spout. When I reach my threshold, hear me shout, let the sodium in, potassium out. Okay, nice job. Well done. Good job. All right. So they get that stuck in their head, and they're like, well, yeah, you know, just remember the sodium rushes in and potassium rushes out uh, when you reach threshold, okay? And it's happening in the axon, okay? All right. So I'm going to skip over that. Uh, skip over that one. Okay. We know that this one is false. It's not the sodium potassium pump that gets everything back to where you started. Okay? It's just the opening and closing of ion channels. That's all it is. Okay? So then the mystery of how it spreads. Okay? The mystery. The my we're going to leave the mystery of how everything gets started. Okay? You could just simply say, well, another neuron stimulates it, and that's true. Okay? Once you've activated okay, the beginning of the axon, this is how it's perpetuated. Those channels are sensitive to the voltage of the membrane. And if you raise it to about uh, maybe minus 50 or minus 60, the channels will open. That's what they do. They're sensitive to the voltage of the membrane. So let's say that we get the first few to open up. And now you all of you represent a part of the axon membrane. You are all ion channels, okay? And you're all going to be sodium channels because that's easy enough to, to do, okay? And usually my room is wider this way than it is that way, but uh, we can still do it, okay? Let's say that you're right next to the cell body, first part of the axon, your sodium channels open up. I want you to raise your hands like this, like a little touchdown thing, but, but just the ones right on this edge, okay? Right there, okay? So now we've opened up some sodium channels and we're going to let a little bit of sodium ions in here. Now, at the neighboring part of the membrane, it says, oh, it's starting to get a little more positive around here, right? Because we're, they're letting positive charge in. So they're like, okay, well, I, I'm going to open up. Okay, so now this row, open up your sodium channels, okay? And the sodium rushes in here, and the neighbors say, oh, it's getting more positive, and boom, you know, they go up, okay? Now, you're right, you, your hands don't stay op open very long because sodium channels are really fast at this, okay? Uh, but we let more positive charge in here, and then the next ones open up. And so now we're going to do the wave all the way across, okay? Because this is how it works in a neuron. It does the wave, ready? So on your mark, get set, go. Yeah, okay? Can we go backwards? Try to get mm, backwards, yeah. You guys are good at this, okay. All right, that's how it spreads. That's how it spreads. Now, what if there is a way that instead of having every neighbor detect the change and open up, what if we could somehow skip a few and just kind of regenerate that every so often? Okay. Do you think that'd be a little bit faster? It is. In fact, the way that we do that is myelin. Okay. Uh, essentially, the action, the action potential gets regenerated only at the nodes between the myelin. There's enough, there's enough electrical changes up here that it can passively spread, just like through a wire that these, uh, these channels here can still detect it. They'll open up. They'll let enough positive charge in that that can passively transmit through a little section of the neuron, get regenerated at each point, okay? So it's much faster. Uh, I don't think I'll do it here, but in class, I would have a competition uh, in passing two brains, okay, two squishy brains. Uh, one neuron, I'm, you know, I might go from front to back in this class, you'd have to pass it hand to hand to your neighbor, every single person all the way down the line. Uh, the, other, the other pathway, I would say, okay, you can toss it every three people, okay? And then I just have a little race and guess which one wins every single time? Okay? The one that can pass it every, every few people. So this type of neural transmission is faster. 
uh, a real life recognition of that. How many of you have ever stubbed your toe before? Okay, yeah, sure, a lot of us, everyone's, all right? Stub your toe, you're like, oh, I stubbed my toe. And then you might swear, okay? And then realize that, oh, it didn't hurt so bad, did it? Okay? Or the opposite, where it's like, dink, and you're like, that was nothing. Whoa! Okay, and then before, you know, why do you feel it, but not the, you know, why do you feel it right off the bat, but why does it hurt or not until a few seconds later? Different pathways for different messages. The pathway of touch goes through large neurons that are myelinated, okay? Very quickly, you know, the six feet up to my brain, oh, you've, you've hit something. The pain neurons are small and unmyelinated, and it takes longer to go six feet, noticeably longer to go six feet, than it does with myelin. So you feel it, but you don't know the pain message until maybe a second or two later. This is about 10 times faster when it's myelinated. So with MS, yes. you have the myelin go apart. The, the action that's causing the, the handicap is that if they're losing signal. The, you lose the signal because without the insulation, it, it spreads too much that it can't get to the next node to regenerate, which means you could have a problem in myelinated neurons, which supply muscles or sensory neurons. Okay. So it's unpredictable where you're going to see the deficit. It could be vision. It could be in moving. Okay. But yeah, MS destroys the myelin, which is bad. Okay. So we're right at 10.30, right when I want to wrap up the, the points of the neuron then, okay? The resting potential, the fact that it's negative inside is primarily because it's leaky to sodium at rest, okay? It lets out a little, excuse me, leaky to potassium at rest. It lets a little bit of the potassium out so that relatively speaking, it's more negative inside than outside, okay? The sodium potassium pump is not, okay, what immediately restores the neuron to its resting potential, okay? It's simply the closing of these channels. And it doesn't take very many ions moving to create these electrical changes. Okay? And you can have thousands of action potentials before the battery essentially runs down. 